Here we're going to look at a nice and quick number theory result. So we're going to start with an integer n, and we will show that n can be written as a sum of two squares if and only if 2 times n can also be written as a sum of two squares. And this is actually a hint to a much more general result about sums of squares. And in fact, as part of my number theory course that I taught last fall, or I guess it was fall before last, I made a playlist on the sums of squares. So some numbers can be written as the sum of two squares, other numbers can be written as the sum of three squares. And finally, I think all numbers can be written as the sum of four squares. So if you're interested in that, look for that playlist. I do wanna say that it was like early on when I was making videos, so they're not quite as refined as they are now. Okay, so notice that this is an if and only if statement. So that means we have two things to prove. So let's maybe go ahead and prove the forward direction first. So in other words, we want to start and assume that n can be written as the sum of two squares. So let's do that. So we'll suppose that n equals a squared plus b squared for some integers a and b. Okay, nice. Now, there's like a bunch of ways to do this but maybe the way that I want to do it uses a brief excursion into complex numbers. So let's do that. So I'll just say, notice, let's take two times n, and notice that that is two times a squared plus b squared by the fact that n is a sum of squares. Now I want to factor two and a squared plus b squared using complex numbers. And these are actually numbers within the Gaussian integers, which is like the integer component of complex numbers if you want to think about it like that. So I'm going to go ahead and take 2 and factor it like 1 plus i times 1 minus i. So notice if you were to FOIL this out, you would get like 1 squared minus i squared, but that's clearly 1 plus 1, which is 2. And that's actually interesting in itself that 2 is a prime in the normal integers, but in the Gaussian integers, it is not a prime because we can factor it as 1 plus i times 1 minus i. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a squared plus b squared, and we'll factor that as a plus bi times a minus bi. Okay, nice. So next what we'll do is we'll match these four Gaussian integers in a slightly different way than we did when we factored them. So let's maybe match 1 plus i with a plus bi and then we'll match 1 minus i with a minus bi. And then let's multiply those together to get a new factorization of 2 times n. Well, it's not really new, it's just a little bit different. So let's see what we get. So this blue part, the real part, will be a minus b. And we see that because we get 1 times a and then i times bi, that's going to give us minus b. And then next we have plus i times a plus b, like that. Now we're going to do the same thing for our red arrows. That's going to give us a minus b minus i times a plus b. So notice we've got two complex conjugates there. Now if you want to, you could like rename a minus b capital A and a plus b capital B if you wanted to, but I don't think that's super necessary. Okay, but now since we have complex conjugates, we know that they're gonna to multiply together to give us something squared plus something squared. In other words, a sum of two squares. So let's maybe go ahead and do that and notice that here we get a minus b squared plus a plus b quantity squared. Again, that's because we're multiplying things that are complex conjugates. But look what we've got, 2n has been expressed as the sum of two squares. Okay, so now let's do the other direction. Okay, now we're ready for the reverse direction. So in other words, we want to suppose that 2 times n can be written as the sum of two square integers, and then show that that means that n can also be written as the sum of two square integers. So we're just going to do this by like some calculations. We're not going to use complex numbers in this case, although you could. I just want to provide a different type of solution. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and suppose that two times n equals a squared plus b squared, again, for some integers a and b. So we've expressed two times n as the sum of two squares. But now notice that that means that a squared plus b squared is even. So that's pretty clear because it's two times n. But that means that a squared and b squared have the same parity. So in other words, they are either both even or odd. So let's that, write that down, a squared and, so like I said, both even or both odd. Okay, but now notice that if a squared and b squared are of the same parity, then a and b are also of the same parity. So that's a pretty standard result. So we've got a and b are of the same parity. So in other words, A and B are either both even or odd. But finally, that tells us that A plus B and A minus B are both even. So let's just think about it. If A and B are both even, then a sum of two even numbers is even, and the difference of two even numbers is also even. Further, or if a and b are both odd, the sum of two odd numbers is even, and the difference of two odd numbers is also even. So that's pretty clear. But since these are even, we know that a plus b over two and a minus b over two are integers. Maybe those would be the numbers that if we square them and sum them, we will get in. So let's maybe go ahead and check that. So we've got a plus b over two squared plus a minus b over two squared. So let's see, that's gonna give us one over four. That's from the square of the two and the denominator of both. And then we'll have a squared plus two ab plus b squared. And then plus a squared minus two ab plus b squared, like that. So let's notice that this two ab and this two ab cancel that a squared and a squared multiply together to give us two times a squared, and then that b squared and b squared add together to give us two b squared. So we've got one fourth times two a squared plus two b squared, but we can rewrite that as one half times a squared plus b squared, which is the same thing as one half times two n, which is the same thing as n. So over here, we know we have the sum of two squared integers, again, from these arguments, equals our number n. And that's a good place to stop.